Well, the Jays' uh, lack of offense continues. One run on five hits as the Jays lose 3-1 to the Kansas City Royals, who just picked up their 35th or 36th win on the year. 36 and 82. Sean Reed Foley got the start today, and well, I'm going to break him down in a little bit. And Danny Jansen got his major league debut as well. I'm going to talk about each player in a little bit, but before that, let's break down the game. Let's start off in the top of the first inning where the Jays look to get off on the right note, and Devin Travis gets a ball on the inner half, or sorry, on the outer half, actually, and he pulled it. And it just goes inside the foul pole. It's a home run, and the Jays lead 1-0. Then in the bottom of the second, though, oh, Ryan O'Hearn hits a two-run shot to left field, and it is 2-1 KC. Then in the bottom of the fourth, bases loaded, nobody out, and Ryan O'Hearn walks to get in a run, and it is 3-1 Royals. Jay's offense, nowhere to be found afterwards. Absolutely nowhere to be found. Like I said, the Jays had two, uh, five hits in the game. Danny Jansen had two of them. Great job, Danny, picking up your first hit of the big leagues. Uh, it was through the left side. Could have been an RBI, but of course it's Russell Martin running the bases, and he gets hosed at the plate. But Danny Jansen gets his first hit. Then we move ahead to the, bo- at the top of the eighth inning where Danny Jansen hits a little dribble of the third baseline, but it stays fair and it dies in the grass. A little infield single for Danny. He goes two for three on the day, and two of the five hits comes from a guy who's never played in the big leagues before. Tells you about this team. Sean Reed Foley, like I said, got the start, went five innings, gave up six hits, three runs, walked three, and struck out three. Now, Everybody freaking out saying, oh, this is the worst offense in baseball, as in the Kansas City Royals, and he didn't do too well. Oh, boy, this guy's not going to do so well. Be quiet, all right? It's his first big league start. Give the kid a break. I know he probably should have had a good start, but it's his first big league one. And we kind of saw the issues. I think he was trying to be too precise. He was, it was When he was wild, he was really wild. Um, we saw some positives. He did throw some quality curveball strikes. I thought, you know, the, the, the problem was, and guys, you know how Jay Happ uh, loves to go upstairs with a fastball and he locates it beautifully and he gets a lot of people swinging at it because it looks inviting, but a lot of players can't do anything with it. Sean Reed Foley was trying to do that today, but he wasn't getting it up enough and it was kind of over the middle of the plate, and he was getting hit hard. That's from what I observed there. Also, when he wasn't throwing the strikes, that was a problem. But, like I said, I did see some positives in his game. Now, in the very first inning for him, he gives up a single, but then he gets Gordon to fly out fairly deep, but then gets the ground ball double play to end the inning. All right, a scoreless first. And then, like I said, in the second inning, he gives up the two-run shot to Ryan O'Hearn, um, but it's the walk that comes back to hurt him to Phillips, the batter before. Walks in this league, bud, come back and hurt you big time. Ask players who give up four or five walks a game. It hurts. Look at Aaron Sanchez early in the season. Couldn't really throw strikes all that well. He was getting rocked all over the place. You know, you give up to two run shot, it's okay. Let's get back at it. Bottom of the third, gives up a single to Merrifield, who had a one heck of a day against him. But other than that, clean inning of work there. Good job after three. And then we go to the fourth inning where things get real shaky for uh, Sean Reed Foley. Gives up a single to Lucas Duda. And again, this is the, the this is what I was just talking about, about the high fastball. You saw on the two-strike pitch, he was trying to get him upstairs. But like I said, he didn't get it high enough. And it was more or less over the middle of the plate. And Duda singles to center field. That's the problem, right? That's the difference between a great pitcher and a good pitcher. As of right now, it's his first big league start, but I'm just trying to see what was wrong in the start and what the other things he can prove on moving forward. You know, problem though, next batter Phillips. He singles to right field and Duda, or excuse me, then he walks Herrera. That turns into a problem. Two on, nobody out. Then he gives up a single to Phillips. He had, uh, Duda had to make sure it got through. Bases loaded now, nobody out. You know, and then he walks O'Hearn, like we talked about, the bases loaded walk. 
and there's still nobody out, and you're down 3-1. This could be an abysmal first start for him. But instead, things change around a little bit. He gets Mondesi to pop up to the infield. Infield fly rule, one away. Okay, that's exactly what you want to see. Next batter, Alcidius Escobar. Ground ball, double play to shortstop. Diaz to Travis, back to first. Got him for the double play. And that ends the inning. He limited the damage. It bases loaded, nobody out, and he found a way to get out of it. That is a positive to take out of that. And then you go to the fifth inning. I really wanted him to get back out there for that fifth. I didn't know if Gibby was going to do it, but he did. Merrifield singles to lead off the inning, but I'm, I'm like, all right, you know, this guy has your number. He's three for three in the game, but you got to find a way to do your job. Alex Gordon. It's a fly ball fairly deep, but the catch is made. Next up, Salvador Perez. Kind of the same thing, but the catch is made. And then a wild pitch, Merrifield moves up, but then he strikes out Lucas Duda to end the inning, and that ends his outing. So, he did find it later in the game, you know, after the bases loaded, nobody out walk. He didn't give up a hit, or he didn't give up a run the rest of the way. He got six straight uh, six straight outs of one hit ball. If you look if you want to look at it that way. Now, yes, he was getting hit hard, but that is because the ball was left up. Look, guys, we talk about it about Marcus Stroman. We talk about it with uh uh, uh, Marco Estrada, when their pitches are low in the zone, they're dynamite. How does Marcus Stroman get so many ground balls? That ball is down. They can't elevate it. That's why he's so good. Sean Foley tries to elevate it like Jay Happ does, but he just didn't get up high enough today. And that's okay. He's got to have a good, he's got to have a start, you know, get his, get a little rocked in the first if, if, if all things line up right and, and this rotation stays the same way, he could be pitching against the Yankees in his next outing. So that's a bigger test. What can he do? We'll have to wait and see. Luis Santos came out to relieve him, though. Two innings, one hit, one walk, three strikeouts. I thought he was very good in his two innings of work. And Thomas Pannone came out there in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the bottom of the eighth inning, threw a clean inning, walked the batter, but got a strikeout. Clean job for him. Great job for Thomas Pannone after that rough, rough first outing for him to put up a clean, scoreless inning there for him. And uh, guys, I'm, so I talked about Sean Reed Foley, Danny Jansen, like I said, went two for three. And um, I got to say, his game calling looks pretty good. He looks comfortable behind the dish. And also, I don't know who it was trying to delay steal him, but you don't do that. And this, this league is going to learn pretty darn quick. You don't run too much on Danny Jansen. He doesn't throw rockets to second base, but what he does is he throws darts. They're right on the money. So I don't know who it was trying to delay steal. He, he catches it, delayed steal. Okay, I'm just going to hose it. Yeah, strike the Diaz. Yeah, you're done, bud. Take it easy. Have a good night. The future is bright, guys. Lourdes Gurriel, we've heard that he's going to start uh, uh, running the bases uh, in the next few days. That's very, very good news. He's getting close to returning. You know, the youngsters are getting there. We just got to break this baby down a little bit here. Devin Travis was one for four. Grichik one for four. Uh, and Granderson one for three. That's it for the offense, though. Oh, other than those two, I just wanted to break down Danny Jansen and, and Sean Reed Foley a little bit because that was their first games. How did they perform? That's probably what all, we, all us Jays fans were really looking forward to in this game. Not really the game itself because you're playing the Kansas City Royals and you'll lose. Game two of the series goes tomorrow. Ryan Baraki takes the mound. Danny Jansen's good buddy. So I, I would presume that Jan Danny Jansen will be behind the dish once again for Ryan Baraki. And look, guys. They've been battery mates, you know, they were. I think they were in double-A together. Then we've seen them in triple-A this year together. You saw Ryan Brucky's double-A and triple-A numbers. Very good. Now he's got his buddy back behind the dish. This could be quite, I mean, unless he doesn't catch tomorrow, which I'd be kind of shocked about. Uh, so like I said, Ryan Brucky on the mound looking for the rebound start after the Boston game. Heath Filmer. I'm going to go with that. Filmer, Filmeyer, I think it's Filmer. I'm going to go with that. 8-15 first pitch like today. Uh, game two of the four-game series, and uh, the whole series is 8-15 first pitches. So no no afternoon garbage, guys. Just a heads up there, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed watching Sean Reed Foley and Danny Jansen, uh, hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below. What you guys think of Danny Jansen's outing? What would you think of Sean Reed Foley's outing? Would you like? Would you not like? I want to hear what you guys have to say about all that stuff. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow night, podcast edition. It's going to be a late one, though, guys. I apologize in advance, but it's just the way she goes right now. Um, 
Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter, down below, follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow night as well as the Jays look to, uh, you know, get back in the series, I guess, and, and, and even up at one apiece. And really just get back in the win column because they have really had a tough time stringing some wins together. Ryan Baracki on the mound for the Blue Jays. The prize young lefty for the Blue Jays against, uh, you know, against uh, Heath Filmer. I'm going to go with that. 8-15 first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. Uh, let's look for a win. And then some more positive things to talk about. We'll talk to you guys then.